Last week, I was talking about the times when, personally, I would quite like to have less choice in, for example, hotels, doctors or Jesus impersonators, so that I can be free to just get on with staying in them, being treated by them or avoiding them, respectively. Well, these are exactly the reasons why I secretly resent being born into a country and era of freedom of religious choice. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think religious freedom is a good thing, or that I don't understand the reasons for it, that it's there to prevent small groups of people who are certain about what the hell is going on from being oppressed by larger groups of people who are also certain about what the hell is going on, and one of whose certainties is that the hell that is going on is not the hell that the first group of people think is going on. So, good, it's nice that all the groups of convinced people can get on with thinking whatever they think the hell is going on is going on in peace and quiet. But it does leave those of us who have no idea what the hell is going on in an awkward position. Because these days we're expected to work it out for ourselves. Well, how? Millions of very intelligent people have spent their entire lives trying to work out what the hell is going on. And whilst a few have resolved it more or less to their own satisfaction, not one has come up with a theory so compelling that everyone else has had to drop their rosary beads, prayer shawls or, I don't know, fossils and agree that, yeah, good work, Steve, that seems like it's basically it. In fact, whatever the hell you may think is going on, and whatever the hell actually is going on, surely we all have to admit that the lack of a majority consensus means that most people in history who think or thought they knew what the hell was going on were, by definition, wrong. So what chance have I got? I'm an actor, writer and opinion haver. But the opinions I have are about what you ought to say at the end of telephone conversations, not about the root and purpose of the human condition. And what I envy is the luxury most of my ancestors presumably had of there being a generally accepted answer in their community which everyone was expected to follow, but no one was expected to work out. If they fancied having a crack at working it out, of course, they could become a priest, rabbi or druid. But if, like me, they felt underqualified and daunted, it was perfectly acceptable to say, well, I'm a fire worshipper, obviously. I was born a fire worshipper, my family are fire worshippers, so like everyone else, I go along to the fire every Wednesday, worship it for a couple of hours, stick a fiver in the collection plate to go towards anthracite, and then the rest of the time get on with writing comedy sketches and expressing my annoyance at falling standards in Downton Abbey. In those days, you didn't expect, ask for, or try to find proof for what the hell was going on, any more than I now need or look for proof of how a cathode ray tube works. I'm equally ignorant about both. I can no more work out how we came to be and what we should do about it now we're here than I could, left to my own devices, work out how to broadcast a coloured moving picture into a box. But in the past, I was allowed to say of both these things, it's all right, don't understand it myself, but clever chappies have looked into it, electricians and bishops and so on, and they assure me that's how it's done. But now, thanks to the cruel tyranny of not living in a cruel tyranny, I'm only able to say that about my TV and not about God.